ability. So when we first started growing trees, we, uh, we, we didn't know much about growing trees. So we hired a guy who was like a consultant, you know, and that's, he'd been in the business his whole life. And we would have him come around every so often to look at what we were doing. Well, anyway, so we had these trees, and, and, and when they were small trees, all of a sudden, one, one day, there was just descended upon us all these birds, you know, white birds. And they were, um, there were insects on our trees, and the birds came and they ate the insects off the trees. Wow. And um, uh, just, they were here for a few days, I guess. It wasn't long. They were just here for a few days. For about a week. Maybe a week, you know. And uh, they, they ate out of the work. Uh, Thousands of birds. Yeah, I mean, it was unbelievable. We were just covered with birds. <laughs> and, uh, but they were eating the insects off the trees. And so a few weeks later, we had the uh, consultant came. And, you know, I was telling him what happened. He said, well, boy, you were really lucky there. I said, because, you know, those birds ate the insects off the trees. But he said, if, you, if the birds had not eaten the insects off the trees, they would have killed the tree. You know, they would have eaten all the leaves and then the trees would have ended up dying. So he said, I don't know what happened. He said, I never heard of that happening before. You know, but it was a remarkable thing. And you know, God had sent these birds to, to eat wow, this stuff. That's awesome. And he said, no, I wouldn't bank on that happening again. <laughs> he said, you want to make sure you spread for the insects and so forth. He said, I never heard of that happening before. But God had sent these, these birds to, to uh, take care of our trees for us. You know? okay. And I'll tell you, we had supernatural story after supernatural story of how God taught us what to do and how to do it mm-hmm. and uh, protect us. Amen. From just protect us. We, 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 we had sold the, uh, a big group, a, a very large group of trees that we had sold to another guy who was highly experienced in the business and he knew what he was, uh, he knew what he was doing. And uh, we had sold them and they weren't quite big enough to harvest yet, you know. So the deal was we sold them to him in the ground and his responsibility was to, to harvest them and to finish growing them out until they got to be the right size. So two things happened after we sold. Uh, one was the coldest weather I ever remember had, had descended on uh, this area, and uh, an unbelievable cold. You know, and on that particular farm, it got down. I think it got down to sixteen. You know, which for, for sixteen years, unbelievably cold. You know, and it just doesn't. When it gets cold here, it doesn't, it doesn't get anywhere near that. And what happened, it was so cold that it caused the, the, the trunks of some of the trees to begin to split. Um, and there, and, and there were, the guy had lost a lot, he lost a lot of trees because the trunks had split because of the cold. But they weren't our trees anymore, you know, I mean, he paid us for our trees and so on. And then, not much, uh, not too much further after that, there was uh, uh, these just rains came, monsoons. And, uh, and an oak tree can withstand a certain amount of water. And, and the, an oak tree can withstand a certain amount of water. But at some point, you've got to get them out of the water. And these, it rained so hard and so long that it just inundated this property. Because the property is fairly low anyway. It just inundated the property. And the guy realized that if I don't move those trees, um, if I don't move those trees, they're going to die. Now, this is after we sold them, praise, thanks be to God, because he had a place he could move them to. He, thought, he moved 5,500 trees, and they move about a, a trailer load, as the size that they were, the trailer load that moves them is maybe 40 trees or so. So I don't know how many 40 trees there are on 5,500 trees, but there's a whole, whole lot of, 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 not to mention the cost of trucking them to where they were going. Somebody had to pick them up. Somebody had to put them on the truck. Somebody had to take them where they were going and take them off. And they had to have a place to put them, you know. Well, we had no capacity to do any of those things, but we had sold the trees. And uh, it was, it was, I tell you, it was God watching. God watching out for us. Oh, God. You know, God. A, oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, so, you know, God watched over us in so many different ways. He is our shield. He Amen. is our Protector. And the word says that unless the Lord guard the city, the watchman will make it. Yes. Thing. That is that is so absolutely true. Unless the Lord guard the city, the watchman. 
unless the Lord guard your crops, the, the, the watchman wake up but you know, but there's you know, with, with cold, there's almost so much you can do, you know. And if it gets too cold, that's what happened that year. And and rain, if the rain stands there for too long, it's just it's gonna damage everything that, that was there. It's just the way that it is. So it was God watching out for our 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 uh, Oh, he's watching out for something. You know, we, we're, we're going to pick back up, we're going to do our, uh, uh, we're, we're going to go back, we lost our website, something happened to our Give Me a Year website, so we're going to go back and recreate the uh, website, but the idea was behind the Give Me a Year was that uh, we were going to do roughly 50 different topics, you know, of, uh, and each one would be a part, so the idea was that over the course of the year, if you study one one each week, you know, over the, over the course of the year, sorry about that, if you uh, studied one each week over the course of the year, you'd master what would be the most important principles of, of the Word. You know? So we're going back now, we're going to go back and recreate our uh, website again. But the other thing is that, you know, it, it's been a, a long time since we did that, and your revelation grows. And, uh, and so we want to go back and we want to recreate the road and add to whatever is, uh, Amen. is, uh, Amen. is there. Uh, you, I wanted to, uh, uh, let's look at, uh, I, was, I was thinking about this in concept. We've been talking about the you know, spiritual DNA. And uh, uh, the, you see, the word says that he, he foreknew us from before. The, the beginning of time and uh, that you and I were known before. See, God's the way God operates is that God sees the end from the beginning and he calls the end from the beginning. That's one of the reasons why words are so important. He sees the end from Amen. the beginning and he calls the end from the beginning. And so the word says that before there were, ever was a world, before there ever was an earth, God saw it. And he saw all those things and in the mind of God because God's eternal. And so in the heart and the mind of God, he saw all those things that would eventually be, you know. Now, in, in the, uh, uh, what, he, what, what that means is that you and I, we existed in... Uh, Amen. Hey, it's it, 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 what that means is that we pre-existed, you know, the created order in the heart and mind of God. And, uh, and so God chose the moment that you would enter the earth. You know, there was a specific moment in time because time is a specific uh, element of the created order. In, the, in, in eternity, there is no time. There's no concept of time mm -hmm. because the time is related to the movements of the earth yes. and the sun and the moon and that sort of thing. And so it has to do with the created order, it has to do with time. So God chose in his infinite wisdom, he chose the specific time that you and I would enter the earth. He chose the parents that you would enter the earth through. He chose the, the place where you would enter. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, I mean, we, could, we can argue with him or we can squabble with him, but at the end of the day, he chose those things. And, uh, and, and, it, and it, it was in his wisdom, and it wasn't, for evil, it was for good that he chose us. He, he intended that we would become, you know, his people. Now, with that in mind, so what happened is God, knew, he foreknew each one of us, and he sent us into the earth at a particular point in time. When you entered the earth at that particular point in time, you obtained a DNA, you obtained a, a, a natural DNA. And that DNA is not subject to change. It, 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 it never changes. You can't change your, your, your DNA. So each person who enters the earth has a specific DNA, and that's their natural DNA. But you and I are two people. We're, we're, we're composed of two specific people. We are the natural man and we're the spiritual man. Well, the spiritual man has a DNA as well. But the difference between the natural man and the spiritual man is you didn't get to choose any portion of your natural DNA, but you did get to choose the spiritual DNA. And the 
what happens is the different things that you did, the things you studied, the places you went to church, you went to, each one has its own unique <coughs> DNA. And we recognize that when Pastor Gail and I got married in the Lord, he would send us to this place and he would send us to that place. And we understood that he was that there was something he was creating in there, you know, because he had not only did he have something for us to get in that place. But he had a specific time for us to go, Absolutely. and a specific time for us to leave. And uh, it was a, it was it was an awesome recognition. That, yes. You know, and invariably, you know, the times that he chose were not the times that we would have chosen. You know, and uh, like for example, we went to one church, and, and uh, we had been there through a very difficult season with the church, and we helped them, help, and you know, done our part to help them through that those seasons. And, uh, and it was it was it was a wonderful thing, and things had finally settled down. And uh, a, we had our place in the ministry. We taught classes and so forth, and things like that. We had uh, I was on the board of directors of the church, you know, and uh, uh, we had uh, positions in the church and so forth. And one day the Lord said, "Let's go. Let's go somewhere else." You know? <laughs> and I mean, in our wildest imagination, we would have never never predicted it, you know. And one of the so one of the pastors who was a, a particularly good friend, we had him and his wife over for dinner one night because we wanted to tell him that, that, that the Lord had spoken to us together. And uh, and so we called him, and he was going on and on about well, you have this position, you have that position, and you go to a new church, you have to start all over again. I said, wait a minute, God said it was time to go. I'm I, none of those things make any difference whatsoever. You know, when God has said it's time to go, and God said it was, that He wanted us to go here, He wanted us to go there. That's all there was to it. You know, well, see, what God was doing, He was shaping our DNA. You know, He was shaping our spiritual DNA. In other words, He wanted to be involved in that process. So, even not just the skills and things that you learn. But the very process of building of the spiritual DNA has to do with God telling you where to go and you being able to receive and you ended up in that place where you're, you're supposed to go. It was a gift of God. You know, that, that there was something that he uh, intended there. And so, you know, you've heard me say this before. The most important skill that any Christian possesses is his ability to hear from God. When we uh, this uh, we bought this when we bought this property here uh, years many years ago. We uh, uh, I, I rented it out to some people. It was just an old ranch shack, a little house, you know. And I rented it out to some people, just kind of keep it on the property that they paid next to nothing. And I think I don't think they even paid this. Yeah. Probably is what happened. Yes. And yeah, they didn't <laughs> pay <know>. us. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, but the place was a shack too. You know, I mean, it was old a shack. And so we had always, in our business, we had always had an office in the projects we were working on. And uh, we had just sold our last uh, project. And I thought, well, we got to have an office. I would not just take that old room shack place and we're going to make it into an office. And so that's what we did. We, we rebuilt this place to uh, make it. Now, that was well over 20 years ago. And uh, we, but we rebuilt the place here. And, you know, we added, you know, this, this room was a garage, you know, so we had it. This and there was that. That was a. This was a garage. That was a carport, and so we, we we built all of that. You know, we made the whole place into a, into an office. And the first use of the property when we when we finished the work, there was a lady we knew who would teach these classes on how to hear the voice of God. Amen. And so that's what we did here on the, the first use of this property after we redid it Amen. was that class of how to hear the Voice of God. And I think it was like a six week class. It was lasted for like six weeks. So, uh, uh, it was intensive, you know, to learn how to uh, do that. But it was our first fruits offering of the, the use of this property. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but it was a fascinating course, too, of how to hear the voice of God because everybody hears differently. And God, if God's going to communicate with you, He's going to communicate spirit to spirit. You know, it may sound like an audible voice, you know, but the truth is, it's, it's really. Now, with that in mind, let's look at Romans chapter 8. And uh, we'll 
start at Romans 8. We'll start. This, he talks about the principle of, uh, of, of being foreordained here, or being predestinated. And at that time in the Presbyterian Church, that was the uniquely a defining characteristic of the Presbyterian Church, is that they believed in the plot of predestination of, of who we were. You know? I don't think they even knew what it meant, you know, but, but they thought of it anyway. And, uh, and there were like wars between the Presbyterian factions over that, that particular. So anyway, we'll, let's we'll start at uh, uh, verse uh, twenty-eight, and he says, "And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, and to them that are the called according to His purpose." So we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. That's a powerful verse. Mm -hmm. <coughs> for whom He did foreknow, He also predestinated. To be conformed again, we're talking about the, the DNA, the spiritual DNA. It says, We know that all things work together for good, but in the love of God and are called according to his verse. For whom he foreknew, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. What shall we say then to these things? Before us, to be with us. The key to the key to predestination, the, the key to the, the entire concept of predestination is in verse 29. It's the first sentence. Verse 29 says, For whom he foreknew, he predestinated for whom. Now, what I think that means is that whom he foreknew was, see, God knew who was going to choose him and who wasn't. And uh, to, to say for him, in other words, he he he, he want, desired, the Bible is clear that he desired that all men would, would choose him, that all men would be saved. But there's a recognition that all men will not be saved. There's some people that are just not going not to choose him. And so I believe that the ones that he foreknew were the ones that were, who was, he knew who was going to choose. He knew who would make that choice and who wasn't. And so the ones that he knew were going to make that choice he predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son. See, that is the most important thing that God desires for any human being, is that we be conformed to the image of Christ. That's, that's God's fondest wish. It's his fondest desire. When, when, when we talk about seed, God has a desire for every human being, and he uses seed to accomplish that desire. Amen. And his desire Amen. is that you would be conformed to the image of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. And so when God begins to speak to you, for example, uh, the, the, the realm of the supernatural, to believe God for the realm of the supernatural is always going to require a seed. Amen. And the supernatural, by definition, you don't know what it is. God has to tell you. In other words, you, you, you can't determine what the supernatural seed is for something that you're believing for that only God can do. So in your prayer, believing God for something that only God can do, you want God to tell you what the seed is, so you can sow the seed. Because you can't, by definition, there's no way you can determine what that seed is without Him telling you what that seed was. Amen. And um, the way I really stumbled across this uh, subject was uh, uh, many years ago, uh, Pastor Gail and I were, were, you know, had a growing family, and, you know, small children growing up and so forth. We were stretched financially, you know. And uh, we, we wanted to, I wanted to buy this property. I saw this property and I thought, wow, you know, that'd be a great property and I know the property and I can develop that property and make some money. The problem was I didn't have any money to invest, you know. And so I needed God to supernatural intervene on, on my behalf. So I began to pray about it. I said, God, listen, I, I know you want to prosper me. I know that you want to bless me. And I believe that there's this opportunity here for me, but I don't have any money, you know. And so I need you to be able to 
give me that without any money. I need you to, 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 to be able to do that. And I know that you want to do it. You know, I believe that, you know, that we're on the same way that you know, you know, that we're, we're devoted to you. We, we believe and I, I believe that you want us to do it through ministry. So I need you to tell me what is this. And so a few days later, the Lord spoke to me when I was in, in, in my prayer time. He said, all right. He said, get out a pen. A pen and a piece of paper. He said, uh, he didn't say, I'm going to give you the seed. And uh, at the time, he just said, get out a piece of paper and I'll use it. And, and he said, you know, there are some, some issues of your character that need to change, you know, need improvement, you know. And, uh, you know, at least when God says that to you, you don't get offended. You know? <laughs> and uh, so he said, you know, you got some character issues that you really need to work on. And he told me what they were. And I began to write them down. There were like a dozen different items in there that were uh, character issues that I really need to work on. God said, you really need to work on these things, you know? And, and you know, I received it, I wrote them down, but I said, God, you know, that's not really what I want to talk about right now. You know, what I really want to talk about is this supernatural thing out here. I need you to, you know, what I need you to do for me supernaturally, and I'd like to know what the seed was. Well, it took me a few days to finally figure out he was giving me the seed, what he was doing. Was he was telling me to see, see God's what God desires for every human being is that they be conformed to the image of Christ in them. So if you're believing God for the supernatural, the seed He alone knows what the seed is for the supernatural, and He alone has foreordained because He is the Lord of the harvest. He has foreordained what that seed is in order to be able to accomplish the supernatural. So if he doesn't get it to you, if he doesn't give it to you, you're not going to get it. But it's an exchange. A seed and harvest, or seed time and harvest, or sowing and reaping is always an exchange. It's about an exchange. And so if he's going to make an exchange, in other words, I'm, I'm willing to say, God, whatever you need me to do, I'll do. Because I want, this is what I want. Well, the same is exactly true of the opposite of God. Words, if this is what you want, this is what I want. And what God wants is that you be conformed to the image of God. So it took me a, a few days to, to, to get it that what he was saying was, this is the seed. You know, these are the things that if, if you, you want me to do this thing for you, I need you to do these things for me because I want you to be conformed to the image of Christ in you. So these dozen things that I want you to do, you're going to have to work on. And I finally dawned on me that that's what the answer was. So I began to, I began to pray about it, and you know, and, and what I came up, what, what I said was, God, I understand that these dozen items that if I don't work on those, I won't be, ever be conformed to the image of Christ, and that's what you want. So I'm going to do that, whether you give me what I'm, you know, whether I get what I'm believing for or not, but I get the thing. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm, I, I will. Be conformed to the image of Christ, all I needed to work on. And I began to work on those things. And uh, I'd like to tell you that, that I took care of them all, you know. But uh, they were, the, the nature of those things were that they are always going to rear their ugly head, you know. And they always have the capacity to come back and bite you, you know. And, uh, and, and the things that, there's some things that you don't ever, that you can never master. Let me give you an example strike. You're never going to master strike. You may master it for the moment. You know, you may make a decision today that I'm going to stay out of strife. The strife is not going to leave you alone, right. you know. It's, right. a, it's a demonic force that's going to come back. And uh, even Jesus, you know, the devil uh, confronted Jesus in the wilderness. And, and when he didn't get anywhere, what happened was the Bible said that he left to return at a more opportune time. Well, if he's going to return to a more opportune time, well, Jesus is going to return to a more opportune time with you, too, you know. And uh, so you may have decided that you're going to stay out of strife right this moment. You laid it away and you think you defeated it, but you've never really defeated it. It's going to come back sooner or later. Perhaps the most insidious and the most uh, uh, important of the issues that God wants every man to resolve the issue of unforgiveness. And that's probably number one. And unforgiveness can take so many different forms, you know. And uh, uh, 
you know, because it can be, well, you don't know what they did, you know, you don't know <laughs> the things that they did, you don't know what they said. I know that they had evil in their heart, you know, that they, they, they may have said they didn't mean it, but I know they had evil in their heart. And you get the idea, there's so many different reasons that you can always find a reason to be, a, you know, to be an unforgiving sister towards somebody if you want to be. However, we're told that we must forgive others, period. There's no exclusion, there's no condition, there's no circumstances. We are told we must forgive others. Now, the, here's the thing about unforgiveness. It's going to come back in a different form. You may master it today. You got over it today, but it's coming back. You know, it isn't ever going to go anywhere. If it came back, Jesus is going to come back to you. Right. you know? I mean, you're never going to get over that particular subject. There's always going to be unforgiveness coming back. So the truth is that many of the character flaws and things that we have, they're ingrained in us from, from childhood or whatever the case may be. And we need to work on those things. The things that God identifies for us, we need to be working on. But the truth is, they may not, it may not be something you're going to totally eliminate right now and never come back. You know? In fact, many of, those, many, of, many of our greatest flaws are, are hidden somewhere in their flesh, you know, and they're coming back, and they'll come back again. And you just have to defeat them again and again and again. But the good news is that the more you defeat them, the easier it's going to be to defeat them again in the, in the future. That's one of the reasons why fasting is so important, because what fasting does is fasting will, uh, is it, it, the, the defeat of the flesh. It's the suppression of the flesh to the exclusion of receiving yes. from the Spirit. And so when you choose to fast, what you're saying to the flesh is, I'm going to subdue the flesh. And uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, I noticed uh, many, many years ago when the Lord spoke to us to begin to, to, to do fasting on a more regular basis, I noticed that it helped me enormously in controlling my tongue. You know, just absolutely enormously. Because the tongue, you know, the operation of the tongue is basically by the flesh, you know. And you can make comments, you can say things, and and uh, and that sort of thing. And to to fast helped me enormously to get control of my tongue, because it was just an element of the suppression of the flesh. Anyway, so what happened was, you know, God's desire is that we be conformed to the image of Christ. So uh, once again, let's go back. So to whom he foreknew, he predestinated. What's that? In other words, I, I think what that means is those who he knew were going to choose him. He Amen. predestined a calling for them. Amen. He predestined assignments Amen. for them. That's why it is so critically important that you be able to hear from God. Because if he predestined you to go certain places, then he's going to choose you to go uh, those places. There's a, there's a great passage in let me just let me just turn there and uh, make some noise. It's uh, Genesis 22, I think, is where it is. Yeah, it says it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham, and He said to him, Abraham, and He said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Now, Isaac was not his only son. He had two sons. And uh, that's the, the whole key to this entire passage is that he had two sons and not one. But one son was the son God gave him. And the other one was the one he got himself. And what God was saying and that was, I want you to bring me the one that I gave you. I want you to bring me what I gave you. I don't want you to bring me what you've got all by yourself. That is a key to your spiritual DNA. It's a real, it's a key to learning what your spiritual DNA is and working it out. Is God has given you certain things. He's given you certain Amen. markers. He's given you assignments. He's given you different things so that he can develop your spiritual DNA the way yeah. that he wants to have it developed. Because, once again, Christ being formed in you. Christ being formed in you, yes, Christ being formed in us, but each one of us may look a little bit different in terms of our callings and assignments. The callings and assignments came from before the foundation of the earth. 
but God has a specific assignment for me. He has a specific assignment for yes. Pastor Guy. He has a specific assignment for every one of you guys. He has something specific in that assignment. And in order to, you, you will never get there mm -hmm. unless he assists you in that right, process. Right, right, and right, he, right. since he does everything in, by his word, you'll never get there unless you hear unless you're able to hear where he wants you to go and what he wants you to do. So the development of your, your spiritual DNA, he orchestrates that. That's right. And and like, for example, Pastor you know, I, you know, he would send us to these different places, or he'd send us to these people, you know, different people, that, uh, or, or he'd bring different people to us, and we had a recognition that, you know, gee, there was something we're supposed to do here. Right, you know, with, right. With, 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 with this. And so the idea was that God wanted to orchestrate the development of our spiritual DNA. But unless you heard, unless you, because right. see, the difference between yeah. the natural DNA and the spiritual DNA is this, the natural DNA, you didn't get to choose any of it. It, just, it, it. it was something that was foreordained by God. But the spiritual DNA is all about choices that you make, mm -hmm. whether you, you made a choice to hear from it, or you've made a choice to allow him to direct you or to send you where you're supposed to go or whatever the case may be. There are choices. And spiritual DNA is all about choices. And you want to make the right choices. And the only way that you could possibly make the right choices is to hear from God what he wants you to do, where he wants you to go. You know, when, when uh, we began to, uh, uh, and once again, as, as a young family with, with, with growing children, we were, we were struggling with our finances, you know, and we, we just said, God, we, we need you to meet us in this area of finance, you know, we need you to speak to us. And he sent us places where we began to, 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 to begin to understand what was involved in, in, in right. financial things, you right. know. Right. Uh, but more importantly, then he began to set up these situations where I want you to sow in this, I want you to sow, not just to sow. See, the idea is that we are sowers, you know, and the sower went out to sow, uh, and, and, that, and, and, and that's a key thing. But it wasn't just sow, to sow. It was to sow to get the DNA of the seed of, of the harvest that you were sowing for. In other words, the DNA, see, the, 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 there's a DNA to seed. When you sow, the seed has a covenant with the soil. And there's a mixture between those two. And I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll relate this to something you, you can get. But there, there's, a, there's, a, uh, uh, there's a covenant between the seed and the song. And they're intended to interact. And so, for example, if, if I put an oak tree, a seed, uh, into the ground, what happens is that seed makes an invisible demand upon that soil. Amen. It says, okay, I'm here now. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's begin. Amen. Uh, an acorn, for example. Now, a, a seed for an oak tree is an acorn. When you look at an acorn, it's got this hard shell on the outside of it. It's just a, just a protective shell. And that's all you see is the shell. But what's inside there that you don't see, there's the food that's going to sustain whatever it is, you know, and, and however long that's going to be in the ground, or however long before it goes in the ground, there's food that's necessary to sustain it until it actually meets the, the soil where it's right, going to be. Right, right, so right, right. It contains an invisible instruction to that soil. Okay, let's get going. You know, we're, we're, yes. we're ready to get going. It, Amen. It, it, so it, 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 in other words, there, there are things that are within the seed. Once again, there's the, the, the assignment, you know, because it's going to become an oak tree. Right. It's not going to become a peach tree. It's going to become an oak tree. So all those things are included within that little round looks like a little ball, you know, a little, little acorn. But when you put that into the ground, what happens is because it has an instruction to the soil, because it has a covenant with the soil, the soil begins to eat on that outer container. Now, an animal can't really do it. Uh, it's got to eat from a particular direction. But when you put an acorn into the ground, the, the, the invisible instruction that is on the inside of that acorn begins to make a demand upon so, um, and and the demand says, okay, let's eat. And what you'll see, if you, if, if you let it sit there long enough, what you'll see is it eats right through that outer shell. 
the outer shell is, is even still there. You can still see the acorn where it's coming out. And the roots have now come out of the inside of the yes. acorn because the instruction was there. The DNA the was there. Right. Now, that's how it works yeah. with you and your spiritual DNA. There's, there is an invisible instruction between the DNA of the seed that you sow and the soil that you sow it into. Oh, yeah. come on, and Brad. God come intended on. it that way. And there's a demand that is made. It's an invisible yes. demand that Amen. is made. That when you when you are at the right place, or you're doing the right thing, because that's what God said for you to go do, and that's yes. what God said for yes, you to go yes, do, yes. all of a sudden, the shell is eaten away. Amen. And the inside begins to come out. And, and everything that it was created to be is released in that moment. That's, I, I tell you, it's such a powerful thing. It's, it's, it's how spiritual DNA works. See, we, we miss, and, and the church, just they miss the, the, the concept of what's involved in seed and harvest. And they thought, oh, gee, this is how we get the bills paid for the church. That's, that's about that much of it, you know? <laughs> because see, is how God does everything. Yes, when you look over, if you look over, just as long as we're in Genesis here, Origins chapter 1. God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created him, male and female. Now you get over to chapter 2, and he begins to talk about how did he do that. How did he do what he just said there? What he did was he fashions up uh, Adam in, uh, uh, out of a, a, a bunch of clay, a soil. You know, he, he fashions up a man. He, ma he, he makes a man. But there's nothing on the inside of the man. All those things that he Amen. just said, all the things that he just said right there, they weren't in there yet. He right. said, this is what we're going to do to him, but i got to put them in. And so God speaks his word into the palm of dust. And the Bible says that, that he blew his breath, or blew his nostrils upon uh, that pile of flesh, or that pile of dust, and the pile of dust became a living, breathing spirit. Amen. Because God, put, in other words, what God did is he put the DNA on the inside. Amen. It was his DNA. That's the, that was the, the power of it. It was his choice. It was his, the DNA that he decided that he was going to put upon the inside of the man. Amen. And that DNA has dominion over the created order. Amen. It has dominion over the places you're going to walk. Notice it does not have dominion over other people. It has dominion. That's an important principle. Because you don't have dominion over other people. You have dominion over the created order, over fish, over the things that grow up. But you don't have dominion over other people. Because God didn't give it to you. It would have said there if he was going to give it to you. So he created man in his own image. And he blessed them and he said, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the, the uh, fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. In other words, what God's saying is, What I just did for you, this way you do. In other words, you're going to reproduce by the process of Amen. seed time and harvest. Of seed yeah, right. All the reproduction. If you're going to take dominion, it's going to be by seed. What's the seed? It's like the same seed as God had. It's the word of God. You, you take dominion over the, like the storms, for example. This is a great, you know, the, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm reading on the internet all these horrific stories of storms and things like that. And, and it, it is, it is a, it's a sad thing. But the truth is, I'm not worried about damage anything belongs to me. Because I take authority over it. Because that passage right there, I have authority Amen. over my over the things that are mine. I have authority over yes. those things. And I can speak to the wind. And, I can, and that's what Jesus did. That's what we see in the picture. You know, in the miracles of Jesus... There are, uh, in the Gospels, there are, it's either 36 or 37, depending upon, you know, who, who's counting. Uh, there's 36 or 37 miracles in the four Gospels that Jesus did. Many times this story is told again. For example, the story of the feeding of 5,000, that story is told in each of the four Gospels. 
Um, but it's only one story. It's still the same story. It's a meeting of four men. So there's either 36 or 37 actual miracles. There are, I think it's six miracles of provision. There are two miracles that have to do with, 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 with nature. For example, he speaks to the wind and he, 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 he commands it. He says, peace be still. I mean, that's a miracle. Because he's able, he's on the sea, he's walking on the water, he's taking dominion over the water. And when he gets into the boat, he and, and the Bible says that when he, he he's immediately at the boat. In other words, he didn't he walk himself. to the boat. He didn't, you know, have to walk over the water. He's immediately yes. at the boat. So there's 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 things going on with uh, uh, and, and, uh, and when he encounters the disciples at the end of, uh, of the book of John, he walks through the door. Right. You know, right. In other words, he doesn't right. have to Amen. open the door. He can just walk through the door. Amen. So he's taking dominion and authority over the created order there. Mm -hmm. But it's done with the word. It's all, all done with the word. Sure. And, uh, so it was when, when with, with your DNA. In other words, what DNA was it that God intended that you would have? Maybe you're a missionary. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're a, you know, maybe you're part of the fivefold ministry. You know, you know maybe you're a pastor, teacher, and so forth. And, uh, you know, part part of the fivefold ministry. Maybe a, a, a missionary. You know, my uh, my my granddaughter, one of my granddaughters, uh, she's uh, since the time she was about seven, she says, "I'm a big missionary." You know, how she know that? You know, what? Why? What? What? What was it that would trigger her to say? I'm a big missionary, you know, and uh, she's actually sung into some of our missionary ventures, you know, because she's a missionary. Amen. And I mean, you know, she's seven or eight years old. She was, that's what she was then. Now she's maybe 10 or 11. But, but, uh, uh, and, and so what did she have to sell? You know, maybe she had 50 cents or a dollar or something. That, that wasn't the point. Amen. She's sowing into her future. She's sowing into the future. DNA that she has a sense of cosmos. Amen. I have met evangelists who, when they were children, they had a vision of preaching to to large. Uh, there was one one uh, uh, evangelist that we knew who was a farm. He grew up in a farm, you know, in the middle of nowhere, and he has a dream as a or a vision as a young child that he's preaching to these huge crowds of people. You know, he's not. Yeah, he's never been in any kind of those situations and so forth. But there's a vision. So God's speaking to him, and ultimately that's what he does. Ultimately he becomes an evangelist who's who's speaking to these large uh, large things. But how did he get that? You know, it's because God had foreordained that he put it there. And, and God put it there. So the idea is, you know, God not believing you to show you what you have for God believing you to, to become the, the person because I need you to structure my spiritual DNA. I recognize that I'm, and that's why, you know, you, you, you know, you can make a choice, you can make the wrong choice, you know, because without God, you'll never make the right choice. Mm -hmm. You know, it, God has to be involved in that process. Mm -hmm. And I think God knew that, and God understood that. I, I want to be involved in the process, you know, because I want to infuse you with what you got to have. I want to be able to give it to you. Thank you, Jesus. Well, anyway, so in uh, John, John chapter 17, let's just see what God says. John chapter 17. I didn't really mean to um, spend the whole day on this. I see. What I'm on on the spiritual DNA. <laughs> And let's see. In verse 24, uh, John uh, chapter 17, verse 24, and this is Jesus speaking to his Father. I will that they also whom thou hast given me. In other words, the choice of those people to be the disciples, they were foreordained by God. Mm -hmm. That those people would, there was something about them that they've been foreordained by God. And they've been mm -hmm. placed into the earth for such a time as that, you know, whatever that time was. So Jesus is now praying. He said, Father, I will that they also whom you gave me. In other words, he's got a recognition there. 
He just got a recognition there that God put those people in that place for him to use those people Amen. because there was something about the, the, those people Amen. that they would be with me where I am and that they may behold my glory, which is also given me. For thou loved me before the foundation of the earth. In other words, they were given to him before the foundation of the earth. Let's look just out of curiosity. Let's look over to the first Peter as well. First Peter chapter one, verse twenty. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, what was manifest in these last times for you. Actually, the verse before it says, with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blood, I should spot. Who was foreordained before the foundation of the world, what was manifest in these times for you. See, once again, God saw the end from the beginning. He saw who you were from the beginning. He saw what he wanted you to become. He saw what he wanted you to do. He saw all those things before the foundation of the world. And he set up these markers in order for you to find out what they were and you to be at the right place, do the right thing, say the right thing, go to the right place. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So you, Jesus. the point Thank is seed. In terms of concept of seed, the most important seed you can sow is to be in the presence of God and say, God, what, what do you have for me? Where do you have for me to go? What is it that you have for me to do? Because you will never figure it out without without Him. If you made a choice without Him, you're going to make the wrong choice. And just that is the way that it is. Mm. Hallelujah. See, see, let's go. So let's go back to see once again. And the demands that are in see. That's why seed is not just about money. It's not just about, uh, you know, producing uh, a harvest of money or, or a harvest of goods and services or, or those kinds of things. No, God does everything by seed. Jesus Christ was the seed of God in to you and I. He sowed Jesus, who was a part of himself, because his desire was that he would have many sons. That it wasn't, it wasn't just well, going to be one. And the Bible talks about that. You know, see, he foreordained many sons unto glory. It wasn't just, just Jesus as the son. Mm -hmm. No, he wanted many sons. He wanted you and I. You and I are, are sons because son speaks of position more than it does. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. So, so the idea was that God showed Jesus for a specific time in a specific place. And the word that was eternal, the Bible says that the word, uh, that in the beginning was the word, the word was with us, and, and I'm sorry, the word was with God and the word was God. In the beginning was the word. So Jesus is the word. He's choosing a particular point in time to sow the word. And the word is eternal and so forth. But Jesus becomes the word and begins to walk among us. And then later on, the writers of the scriptures begin to pick up those words and begin to, to, to write it out. The Bible says that the word, that the Bible was written by holy men of old as they were moved yes. on by the Holy Spirit. In other words, it retained their individual character. It may have retained, you know, who they were and their style and all those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, it was written by the Holy Spirit. You know, God himself wrote that word as a seed. For you and I. So the idea is that, um, and it's in Isaiah, it says that, you know, this is my covenant with them, that my word will not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed. Now, out of the mouth of thy seed, see, that's you and I. And, and his covenant was that the word's not going to depart out of our mouth. We can use the word to sow the word to accomplish the purposes we want to accomplish. So you see, seed was uh, the development of your spiritual DNA. There was seed. God sowed continuously for that purpose, that you would get it and that you would receive it. But our understanding of seed, to, to get a real true concept of seed, get a real full concept of seed, we kind of got to go back to the, to the concept that seed is how God does everything. Amen. 
everything. And so sin is not just about a tangible thing, but in Mark 4.14, 4, this is the sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. So one of the most powerful seeds that you can sow, if you want to change any situation, see, it, the Bible says that he was before all things. He, the word, was before all things. He is in all things. And in him all things hold together. That means if you want to change a situation, the world may think that it's not possible to change those circumstances and situations. But if he's in all things, if he's supposed to be before all things, he's in all things, and in him all things hold together, he can change anything. Any situation, God is able Amen. to change. God is capable of, of making a change. And the seed that makes the changes to work. Well, anyway, praise God. So, see, I, we, I think what we want to do is I think we want to revisit this, the seed, the concepts of seed, uh, uh, a little bit more so that we actually get the full import of what's actually intended with the seed. You know, it's not just about sowing to get this, but it's about sowing to put God in the middle of those situations because that's what seed does, you know. If you sow the seed of the word, you put God into that situation. Amen. And now he can, uh, at the, toward the end of Mark 4, it says the way that the seed works is the seed grows up and becomes greater. The seed grows up Amen. and becomes greater. It doesn't morph into something it's not. That's why you want to yes. be so in the Word. In other words, right. I, if I'm going to be speaking, you know, when, when Pastor Gil and I got married, I understood that there were things that I wanted to be speaking the Word over her. Right. Because I wanted the Word to manifest Amen. and I wanted the Amen. Word to grow. It wasn't just that, you know, this wasn't something I wanted. No, this is what the word said. Right? Give, me, give me an example. You know, Bill's mother had to have um, miscarriages. And um, I, I, I don't know, but I, you know, we never had a miscarriage. But I can, I feel pretty confident that it's probably pretty serious in that matter. It leaves people really scarred, you know. It could be a, a horrible thing and people have miscarriages. So I began to speak over that there's a there's a passage in the Old Testament that says, none shall miscarry or be barren in the land. So I began to speak that over. I wanted that seed Amen. in her body. That that the seed of God over her body was none is going to miscarry. None is going to be barren. So I didn't want she, you know, she was my mom there, you know, and I didn't want her to be barren. You know, we wanted to reproduce. We wanted to so I had an understanding that if we put that word in, that God was faithful. God was going to do what was necessary to do. He would watch over that woman. See, I needed to put the seed. See, the seed had to enter the womb anyway, but it had to be the seed of the word of God because I, that's what I wanted in there. I wanted the covenant of protection that the word could offer in some Amen. Oh, oh hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it's we just thank you, Lord, for this powerful yeah. word tonight, today. I tell you, there, there is a destiny that God has for each of us. And it is a progression. Uh, the Bible says that there's a mystery of the progression of God-likeness. So in other words, there is a progression that the, the, he desires for those that have been called by him to continue to grow, not to stay like a child but to grow up and become adult children, adult sons of, of God. And uh, I am so grateful. Uh, I, I want to remind you all that I gave you, I've given you the book, uh, or got Patty put together those family promises that I gave you. Uh, the family promises book that the Lord had me put together is uh, the scriptures that the Lord has given me over Pastor Kevin, uh, scriptures that he gave me over the children, you as uh, my children, those are for you. Those are promises that he's given me. One of them, Pastor Kevin, spoke about that the seed will not return out of the mouth of the children or the, or the seed seed. Amen. That this word will grow up in our seed and you guys. Amen. And so, uh, and, it's, and it is continuing to grow up in us for new places that God has. For each of us to walk in. So I encourage you, if you don't have any promises 
over your family, over your spouse, <laughs> over those things, and you're beginning, just beginning to, to get new to the Word of God, and you don't know how to activate your faith over a particular, or, or have a verse that you can uh, speak over your your husband and over your children. I have some verses, I have some scriptures that the Lord has given to me to speak over my family, and he'll give them to you as well, but you can use those, and your, your promises are available, they're of no private interpretation, they're for you to be able to have as well and to use if you'll take them. But really, this is how it works. I mean, what Pastor Kevin's talked about. And again, we have, have, have a, God has allowed us to have time through the years to develop our understanding of seed time and harvest. And it is continuing to grow. But everything that we do is a seed. Our time is a seed. And like uh, Sister Dr. Donna and I were talking about today, the accesses, the time, what are, you, uh, what are you allowing to speak in to your life? What are you letting come in? There is a seed and a value to where you spend your time. Amen? And so uh, putting yourself in the house of God is a seed. Spending, giving attention, giving honor to the house of God is a seed that God seeds. It's a seed that God seeds. Sees and God is not mocked. Got to know that God is not mocked. What you sow, you will reap. And so I don't care if you do it outwardly out there and you're not doing it in the private. God sees, and you are going to multiply and grow up what you're sowing. And so it's important not that you just come on Sunday and come, but that you setting aside some time individually. Even if it's just happened, like I, when I was working, I had my Bible in my car, and I spent 15 or 20 minutes reading in, in traffic or whatever. That, um, that was before all the computers and everything. But I was endeavoring that I was going to take a few minutes. I carried my Bible with me. So I could be, if I had some extra time, I was going to spend, I was waiting for an appointment. I could spend a few minutes in the Word because that all added up. But that was, you know, over 30 years ago. But it's, it's for you to make that decision that you see that it's worth it and that you spend and that you sow, um, sow those seeds in His presence and let the Word grow up because it will transform your life. So we thank you, Lord, for the Word's great words and, and so much depth of, of, of revelation that God has given Pastor Kevin. And we just thank you, God, that your Word is growing up mightier in us every day. It's not staying the same, but it's becoming such a great big mustard seed. Hallelujah. Mustard tree that it is branches and it is growing out. So, Father, we thank you, Father, for just a little mustard seed that we would take of faith and, and apply it, Lord, that as we, as we sow it in our hearts and as we develop it, Lord, that you will grow us into this big, a big tree, a big mustard tree that other people can hear our faith and what we have done and how you have shown us to sow this and to do this. And we just give you all the glory. And we thank you. It's a pleasure to bring our tithes into the storehouse because you promised again that you will open the windows of heaven. Father, we thank you that the windows of heaven are open to us today. And you have poured us out blessings that we do not have room enough to receive, Lord. And Father, we thank you. They are spiritual and they are natural and we are so grateful. And Father, we thank you for this promise that you've given us from Malachi. We bring with joy the offerings to the house of God and we thank you and we prove, have proven you faithful, God. You are so faithful and we give you all the glory for all that you've done in our lives. Father, thank you that you love us so much that you will not leave us alone. You will continue to do a work in our hearts. Thank you for that, Jesus. And we just thank you right now. If you've got 
listening today, if you have not invited Jesus into your heart today, if you're hearing us talk about this message and talking about seed, the greatest seed that you can sow is inviting Jesus to come into your heart, to acknowledge him, say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come into my heart and do a new work in my heart. I accept the finished work of Jesus Christ. I accept what you've done on the cross, and I accept you into my heart, and I thank you, Father, for the salvation that you have given me and you have done for the world in Jesus' name. So I invite you in, and I confess to you that today you are my Lord and you are my Savior. I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead for my sins and you paid the price for my sins and were raised from the dead and I thank you for it and I receive this. I receive my salvation in Jesus' name today and I thank you for doing a new thing in my heart today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with me. God bless you and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you, Anyway, for you guys, guys with young families or growing families, you want to.